Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Today is a great session because it's a session that shows uh, how AWS innovates for customers and partners. And I'm especially excited because we're doing this innovation in the mainframe space. So we do have a very high number of customers that are asking for help about their mainframe. On one side, they have issues and challenges with their mainframe platform. And at the same time, they do run core business assets, core business data that's being hosted on that mainframe. And on the other side, they see that with AWS, they can get agility, resiliency, and cost efficiency. And so they're asking, how can I move those assets from the mainframe to AWS? Well, to address these questions, I'm very honored and pleased to introduce a new AWS mainframe monetization service. It's a unique platform for migration, monetization, run, and operation of mainframe applications on AWS. So today, I will present the components of the new service. I will present to you the approach to adopt the new service. And I will also describe to you how to get started. But before I do this, let me introduce myself. My name is Phil DeValence, and I'm the product manager for the new AWS mainframe monetization service. So we always start by listening to our customers. And when we listen to them, we hear issues and challenges with our mainframe. And you can see here a long list of challenges that can come up. Not always at the same time, but it's a long list. One that I'll, I'll take an example for is scalability. And you may have heard during the pandemic some of the stories around scalability. Mainframes have finite resources, and so if there are spikes in the load, then it becomes difficult to process the requests that are coming to the mainframe. Another issue that comes up frequently is a skill shortage. The specialists that can manage the mainframe platform and the applications are getting retired. They're getting harder and harder to find. And so it becomes a problem to find the new talents that can manage not only the infrastructure, but also the application. Another one that's very important is the technical debt and the technical complexity that comes with the mainframe. And it's not uncommon to see some customers that do releases of the application every six months because of that complexity. So customers want to modernize their mainframe for three main drivers. The first one is to increase the agility. Agility is the ability for a business to respond to change inexpensively and quickly. The second biggest driver for modernization of the mainframe is to reduce the cost. Mainframes are notoriously expensive, and so customers are trying to free up some costs or some savings so that they can invest more into innovation. And the third biggest driver is to mitigate all the risks. You see, it's a long list of risks and challenges that they have, so they're trying to find a way to mitigate this. And that's when they start embarking on modernization projects. And when they do embark on the modernization projects, then lots of questions come up. What are the benefits I can get from the modernization projects? What should be my goals? How should I prioritize? And one specific question that come up is around non-functional requirements. These are very important on the mainframe side. Typically, requirements around security, around high availability, around scalability, around system management. How do I manage all this? How do I design a cloud infrastructure that can meet those requirements? Another question that comes up often is, what are the tools and patterns that are best suited for my mainframe workload when I want to modernize to the AWS cloud. Another question that comes up is, I know that technically it's not going to be an easy project. So I want to minimize the risk. And how do I do this? Well, to best address all the issues and challenges, to meet the goals of the monetization drivers, and to answer the questions, then we're very pleased, and it's a major milestone for AWS, to launch the new AWS mainframe monetization service. The team has been working hard on it. Last year, if you remember, we did launch the AWS mainframe migration competency so that we can highlight and showcase the partners that do have capabilities 
for their solutions, for their practices, and proven customer success. While we've, co we've continued innovating, and now we're very happy to actually bring this new technical solution on the AWS cloud. It is the new AWS mainframe organization service. One of the objectives of the service is to simplify and accelerate the projects that are being delivered by the migration teams. So, again, the AWS mainframe modernization service is a unique platform for the migration, modernization, execution, and operation of mainframe applications. So something to notice here is that differently than some existing migration services, it's not just focused on the migration phase. It also includes running, executing, and operating your mainframe applications. So I'm going to walk you through the main steps that would actually go through for the uh, when you use the AWS mainframe organization service. It starts with the analyze phase. During that phase, typically, you would collect the mainframe application artifacts. You would look at all the dependencies. You would look at the complexity. And then you would start doing an assessment of what you need to do to, in order to do the modernization project. That's where you would do most of the planning. The second phase is the develop stage. This is where you would actually do the migration itself. So you would take the application artifacts, you would either recompile them, you could do some conversion, for example, you would do the data format adaptations. So whatever work is required to create a new target application would happen during the develop phase. Then you would move on to the deploy phase. And the deploy phase is really specific to that new service in that we're providing a managed service that's going to be a runtime, or an execution runtime environment for your application. And so as part of the deploy phase, you would create a runtime environment, you would deploy your new application onto that runtime environment. And then the final stage here is the operate stage, meaning that once you've deployed an application onto the runtime environment, then through the AWS mainframe organization service, you can operate your application. You can see some console screens about how it's doing, some health metrics. You can monitor all the logs, get some alerts, etc. You can also see that there is an error that goes back to the beginning. And the reason is because once you've done the initial migration and modernization to the service, you can still reuse the tools so that you can further do enhancements to your application. If you want to do uh, enhancement to the application logic, or if you're trying to modernize furthermore, then you can use the analyzer tool, for example, once more. You can evaluate the impact of your changes. You can decide on the strategy on how to best modernize your application. And then you can go through the tool chain again, go through the develop, the deploy, and then operate. You also see at the bottom that there is an automate feature. Not only through the managed service, we're automating a lot of the activities and the operational tasks that are necessary, but we're also introducing a DevOps pipeline so that you can accelerate the speed at which you build new application and deploy those new applications onto the AWS mainframe organization service. So here you can see some of the key benefits that we're expecting from the new AWS mainframe organization service. It starts with the agility. I've already talked about some of the challenges with the technical debt that you can find on the mainframe and how much time you can take to release software. While well, uh, on the agility side, that's one of the main reasons why customers are moving to the cloud, and it's especially more important for the mainframe applications. So we bring agility in many dimensions, and I'll talk about later the, some of the, those dimensions, but I want to highlight a few of them. So I already talked about DevOps. The other aspect is the on-demand resources. All the resources that are being provided for all the stages that they described are available on demand, which means that within a few minutes, you can start instances of a developer environment or instances of an analyzer environment or instances of a runtime environment, and you can do that across multiple regions globally. And the other aspect that's important for agility is the managed service itself. So the managed service is going to bring in a lot of automation so that you don't have to deal with the heavy lifting of operating and managing that environment. We're going to provide automation. We're going to provide the infrastructure resources to simplify the management of such environment. So that's the second biggest benefit. It's the managed service itself. 
with fewer simpler interfaces, then you can really focus on the business value rather than ma on to managing the undifferentiated heavy lifting of the infrastructure. The third big benefit is that we're not reinventing the wheel in that the tools that we have hosted within the AWS mainframe monetization service are proven tools. We know that in the mainframe migration and monetization space, it takes many years before the tool can support a lot of customer use cases and become reliable. So we're actually partnering and also using our own tool to adopt two patterns, replatforming and refactoring. So we have two tool chains that are available through the AWS mainframe monetization service for replatforming and refactoring, and those tool chains have been proven across thousands of customer projects already. And so by virtue of having those proven tool chains, on top of the reliability and all the infrastructure benefits that AWS provides, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Another big benefit that we expect from the service is in terms of quality of service. So remember what I talked about, the non-functional requirements, security, high availability, elasticity. Well, the service is designed to be able to meet or exceed typical mainframe requirements in those areas. Another benefit that we're expecting from the service is fast modernization. And it's fast modernization because we're taking an evolutionary approach. It's not rip and replace, it's not big bang. On the contrary, we believe that by modernizing the existing application artifacts that are existing on the mainframe, then we can minimize the risk and we can accelerate the migration and monetization projects. By virtue of using efficient tool chains that are already proven, then we can provide those benefits faster. And last but not least, major big benefit that we expect from the service is cost efficiency. We're introducing a pay-as-you-go model, and with that model, you'll be able to um, pay on demand for your, the instances that you start within the service itself. We're also supporting an elastic infrastructure, which means that you don't have to size for peak, but you can have an elastic infrastructure that's really going to map what your business needs are. By virtue of having a pay-as-you-go model, then of course we're going to reduce the, the cost of entry so that it's easier to experiment and easier to innovate. So now, I'd like to highlight some of the key components that you'll find in the service. So this graphic here is especially useful to start understanding what's inside the service and what's outside of the service itself. We're really starting with the foundational components of how you can do a migration and monetization projects. So you can see inside the service itself, you will find the analyzer tool, you will find converter tools, developer tools, a compiler, you will find the runtime environment. And of course, the runtime environment can be either used for tests or for a production environment. You can also see the components that are outside of the service. You can see, for example, the object store. You can see the CI CD pipeline elements. You can see um, some of the services that are integrated uh, on the AWS side. So, for example, services for security, services for monitoring. You also know that. When you have a mainframe workload, there are typical components that are outside of the workload itself. For example, you could have a scheduler, you could have output and print management. While those capabilities are not within the AWS mainframe monetization service at this time. Another key element to understand is that the application data is not hosted within the mainframe itself. So that means that within the um, AWS mainframe monetization service, we are actually focusing on the runtime environment executing the application code itself, but the application data is outside of the service. And that allows you to actually have a wider choice of options in terms of where you want to put your data, whether you want to put that data in a managed relational database, such as Amazon RDS, or whether you want to put that data in a file storage, and you could put that, for example, in EFS or FSX. So that, those tool chains are actually replicated for the two migration and monetization patterns that we support. So you will see that there will be tool chain for the automated refactoring and then tool chain for the replatforming. Now, let's get a little deeper into the patterns that we do support. So this picture illustrates what's going to change from the mainframe to the target AWS 
AWS Mainframe Migration Modernization Service. So on the left-hand side, you can see the typical mainframe stack, starting from the mainframe hardware at the bottom, then the mainframe operating system, and then middleware, databases, application codes, data format, and on top you have the business functions. Well, when you do a replatforming, you can see that the underlying stack is completely changed, right? We're moving to the AWS cloud. You can see where the AWS mainframe modernization service fits. When you do replatforming, you're actually moving the application assets onto what we call a mainframe compatible managed runtime. And on top of this, when you do replatforming, we're trying to preserve the application artifacts, such as the application code and the data format. And that's why you see it's still in blue. And what we do is that the mainframe compatible managed runtime will provide the APIs, will provide the dependencies for the application so that the application can be recompiled and be executed on that environment. So the impact is not, at the, is not um, within the application itself, uh, because this we're trying to preserve it, but the, our underlying stack is being modernized. So that's where you see it's not just a migration project, but it's also a modernization project because you benefit from the modernization of the infrastructure itself. And on top, you can see there is um, business functions that stay the same. And it's very important that they stay the same. Main reason is because if you have functional equivalence, then you can automate a lot of the testing that's required, and so that improves the project speed and that minimizes the risk of the project. Now, we can compare this with the automated refactoring pattern. With automated refactoring, what's going to happen is that we're going to take all the application artifacts, the source code, the data format, etc., and we're going to convert it, we're going to transform it onto a modern stack. Which means that when you look at the application code, that's going to be new code. When you look at data format, that's going to be new data format. And the entire, entire stack is going to be uh, modernized. The only thing that will stay the same again is a business function. And again, we do this for project efficiency and to minimize the risk of embarking on such projects. All right, so for the automated refactoring pattern, we're very happy that Blue Edge is now within AWS. So Blue Edge has leading capabilities for doing automated refactoring. It has a lot of solutions that are available for the various stages uh, of the automated refactoring process, starting from Blue Insights, moving on to Blue Edge Velocity for the transformation, database modernization, and then also data comparison. So Blue Edge provides a lot of and strong capabilities to do automated refactoring. Now, in addition to the technology aspect, also Blue Edge comes with very strong professional services with expertise on how to use those solutions. We're very happy to have Blue Edge with us uh, now within AWS, which means that now we can deliver um, automated refactoring projects using AWS ProServe. Blue Edge is very well aligned uh, with AWS. They are very customer obsessed. They have a culture of innovation that's very well aligned with us. So we're very happy to have, us, to have them with us. Now let's get a little deeper into how we do automated refactoring using the Blue Edge solution. So first, I want to highlight where the AWS mainframe modernization service sits. You can see that the entire Blue Edge toolchain is part of the service itself. You can also see the impact from the mainframe to the target runtime. So initially, you had, for example, COBOL, PL1, JCL programs, and then all this gets modernized and automatically refactored to a web front-end, Java services, and batch scripts. So that's the impact of using automated refactoring. You get a totally modernized stack running onto AWS. And all this runs within the managed runtime environment on the AWS mainframe modernization service. Now, in order to get there, there are additional steps that you need to go through. The first step is automated reverse engineering. So using the analyzer tool from the Bureau Edge tool chain, we're going to look at all the dependencies, we're going to look at uh, uh, all the complexity, and we're going to start strategizing on how we want to do that automated refactoring, how we're going to define the work packages, um, which target we want, which rules we're going to apply, what are the coding standards, etc. The second step is, using, is doing automated refactoring, forward engineering, which means that at that step, we're going to use a converter tool that are going to transform the legacy code into a more popular languages, such as the Java services. So once all this is done, we're going to go through some um, quality gates 
That means we're going to check at the quality of the code. We're going to check that we have good code coverage in terms of the test cases that we run. We do extensive testing to make sure that we have functional equivalence between source and target. And the result is that we're going to get a web front end that's using uh, Angular framework. You're going to get Java services that can be rich through uh, REST interfaces. And then we're going to have batch scripts that are running within the managed runtime environment. Again, you can see that uh, data is outside of the managed service. You have the file storage that's still outside of the ser uh, managed service. Same for the scheduler. Now, by virtue of using the um, automated refactoring, then you're going to have a, a load balancer that's front-ending your uh, online workload that's being transformed. And you also have an API gateway that's readily available because you're creating Java services that have that REST interface, so you can directly call them through an API gateway if you want to. So in summary, I mean, the automated refactoring using Blue Edge is a fast and coherent transformation of code, data, and dependencies all together. Now, I want to talk about the second pattern that we support within the AWS mainframe organization service. And for that pattern, we're super glad to actually partner with MicroFocus. MicroFocus is a leader in the uh, replatforming um, of mainframe applications. And so we're very glad to collaborate with MicroFocus with a strong tool chain to be able to do those replatforming projects. From COBOL, PL1, JCL, on to running the same type of languages on the AWS mainframe organization service. So you can see here that we are not transforming the entire stack like we did before. On the contrary, we're trying to minimize the impact to the application code to the data format, which means that these applications still require some elements that are very similar to what's currently running on the mainframe. For example, you have a transaction manager on the mainframe side, while there is functionality that's similar also on the target side. You have a batch subsystem on the mainframe side to support the execution of your JCR, see where your JCR, how they are doing, where the seasouts are, um, batch priorities, etc. While you also have a batch subsystem that does exist within the runtime environment on the target side. You have data mapping that's in place as well, because once you're getting into the new storage types, then you want to be able to uh, still have the vSAM APIs that are available for your applications to be able to call those uh, vSAM files. So all the dependencies that are required for the COBOL, PA1, or JCL are being provided by the runtime environment. Now, how do you get there? Um, we go through the same phases that I showed to you at the very beginning. So we start with Analyze. That's where we're leveraging MicroFocus Enterprise Analyzer. Uh, with the AWS Mainframe Modernization Service, we're making that Enterprise Analyzer software available on demand on the managed service. Same thing for the second step. Once we've done the analysis and we've planned on how we want to do the migration and monetization, we're going to move to actually recompiling the code, making code adaptations so that it can be, uh, so that binaries can be created. And for the second step, which involves using MicroFocus Enterprise Developer, this software is also available on demand from the service itself. Once this is done, then we go to the build stage, and that's where we use the compiler from MicroFocus before deploying onto the uh, runtime environment. So, in summary, with this pattern, the code is completely ported and entirely recompiled onto the mainframe compatible runtime. Now, there is a question that comes up often, and you, you've heard me talking about a managed service, but what is a managed service precisely? Because especially in the mainframe industry, you may be familiar with managed service providers. Right? That's where there is a, a third-party company that's actually hosting your mainframe, uh, doing staff augmentation, possibly providing uh, or doing some staff uh, outsourcing. Well, this is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the technical solution here. And what we're providing with the managed service is a comprehensive infrastructure resources and automation with an easier interface that's available through the AWS console through the AWS CLI, command line interface, or through AWS APIs. So let's compare the level of responsibilities that you get depending on where you're uh, deploying your application. You can see on the left-hand side the mainframe again. So when you actually have a mainframe on-premises, you have to man manage the uh, data center, you have to manage the air conditioning, the hardware, the hypervisor, and the entire stack from bottom to, to the top. 
When you're moving workload to infrastructure services, such as Amazon EC2, AWS is taking care of the lower layers. So it's taking care of the data center facility, it's taking care of the racks, the hypervisor, and then starting at the EC2 level, then you, you take ownership of the operating system and you're responsible for managing the operating system and everything on top of it. So you're still responsible for licensing, for procuring the software. Um, for doing the installation, the patching, doing installing the monitoring, doing the scale, I mean configuring scalability features, you're still responsible for managing the high availability of your environment. So there are still a, a lot of activities that you're responsible for. Now, when you're moving onto the managed service, the managed service is going to take care of some of that responsibilities for you. So it's going to remove some of the burden of managing such environment for you. So let's just pick a few examples. We mentioned licensing and billing. So, for example, with licensing, with a managed service, you don't have to procure licenses from MicroFocus or from Blue Edge. It's going to be included within the managed service itself. So there is no outside processes or procurement that you need to go through. In terms of monitoring and logging, the managed service is going to make that easier for you. And I'll show it to you slightly later, but the managed service is actually pushing metrics to CloudWatch, pushing the logs to CloudWatch logs, so that you can have all that um, monitoring and logging that's being made easier for yourself. Same thing on the high availability side. Rather than having to configure yourself where you're going to deploy it across multiple availability zones, and then configuring all the uh, communication that's required across the multiple runtime instances, what well, the managed service is going to take care of, of this for you. So it's going to make it much easier. And what that will allow you is only focus on the application level and the data level. So actually what this picture is displaying to you is both the combination of the AWS mainframe organization service and Amazon RDS, because I already told you that the data is not included in the AWS mainframe organization service, but I'm still displaying it here. So that means if you're using a combination of those two services, then you'll have managed services capability up to the application and the data. So the goal of using a managed service is really so that you don't have to do the heavy lifting or you don't have to go through the operational complexity of managing the lower layers of your infrastructure, but you can really focus and spend your time on innovating and building new capabilities. All right, so I did mention that the AWS mainframe monetization service not only does the migration and monetization, but it also allows you to execute and operate those applications. And we do this with a runtime uh, managed environment. And this is a, a, a detail, some details about the runtime architecture. And this is where AWS really shines and brings a lot of value and experience because we've been running enterprise workloads for a very long time onto the AWS cloud. So what I'm showing here is a highly available topology, but of course with a runtime environment, you could also have a standalone topology. So depending whether you're deploying your application for dev and test or whether you're targeting a production or pre-production environment, then you could use different topologies, either standalone or highly available topology. So let's look at some of the components that are outside of the service itself. So I already mentioned that the data is going to be outside. I already mentioned that the scheduler output and print management is going to be outside. But I also want to mention some of the native integrations that you get with other AWS services. For example, on the security side, you'll have native integration with IAM and Cognito, so that it makes it easier to do uh, authentication, authorization management. For monitoring and logging, then you have native integration with CloudWatch, so that you can get the metrics, you can build your own dashboards on how you want to monitor your environment. For logging, you'll get everything within CloudWatch logs. For cost and usage management, which is pretty important for some mainframe customers, especially when they have to do chargebacks, then you'll be able to leverage tags and then be able to actually do consolidated billing on the resources that are being consumed by the AWS mainframe organization service. So as I was saying before, the managed runtime is really designed to meet and exceed typical requirements that we see for mainframe workloads. So for high availability, you can see that we can deploy the instances across multiple availability zones. And you have auto-scaling along, along the way. Now, you can also see that on the right-hand side, you, there are system logs, queues, cache, because when you move a mainframe application from uh, the mainframe to AWS, there are some artifacts that could be legacy artifacts, such as TS and TDQs, that needs to be implemented on the target runtime. And so 
the managed service is also taking care of those dependencies for you. So you don't have to handle that complexity. You just specify how many instances you want, where you want to deploy it across multiple availability zones, and the managed service not only will instantiate the runtime instances, but will also address the complexity of all the direct runtime dependencies. So we talked about uh, high availability. Uh, we can talk about scalability, elasticity. So the AWS mainframe authorization service and the runtime piece is also uh, can be integrated with uh, auto scaling, so that if you have changes in loads, then you can actually scale out or scale back in. It also provides the ability to not only do horizontal scaling but also vertical scaling. So you have the ability to change it different to change the instance type and the instance size, so that if you need more compute or if you have a different workload profile, then you have the ability to really choose the instance type that meets your needs. On the system management side, I already mentioned that you have strong system management capabilities. So you have dashboards that are part of the service, but also we're pushing metrics, we're pushing logs to CloudWatch logs so that you can centrally manage all of this. So as a summary, what's important to remember here is that we totally recognize that it can be complex to design a cloud infrastructure and cloud architecture that can meet or exceed mainframe, uh, mainframe requirements. And so the, the managed service is really designed to be able to meet those. So the other important aspect is that the AWS mainframe organization service is really designed also to accelerate the evolution to managed services, to agile services. It's not just you do the migration modernization and then you're done. On the contrary, we truly believe that it's important that customers see how they can further modernize and make the services more agile. And so I want to describe to you what is typically the modernization path and modernization journey for those uh, mainframe monoliths. So you can see on the left-hand side that you have tightly coupled programs that typically share uh, a data store on the mainframe side. And the first phase is a short-term migration. And that goes back to the capabilities I described to you earlier on. You go through the analyze, you go through the develop stage, you do the migration, and then you end up on the AWS cloud. Now, as soon as you're on the AWS cloud, the tool chain also allows you to do API enablement so that the new capabilities that you have currently running on, on, on the AWS side then can be called through uh, REST interfaces, for example. And as soon as you do this, that means you have created some coarse grain services, which are also called macro services. And then once you're on AWS side and you have your macro services, if you think that you need to further modernize, there are lots of options that are available. If you want to innovate, you can do so immediately. But if you want to go to like more granular services such as micro services, you can do some optimization as well. So you could wonder, well, why do I have to start or why shall I start with macro services? Well, the main reason to start with macro services is because macro services already have a lot of agility attributes that are needed by mainframe workloads. And I'll describe after, afterwards what are those agility attributes. The second reason why we go to uh, macro services is because we do so by using tools. So it's very quick and it's very efficient. The third reason why we go to macro services first is because there is a transition to micro services because they're already under a modern stack they already have a modern data store, so it's much easier to extract and create microservices once you're on the, on the AWS side rather than doing it from the mainframe monolith. And the third reason why we create microservices, the fourth reason, sorry, why we create microservices is because as soon as you have your microservices that are running onto AWS, you can innovate very quickly. And you not only innovate with few services, but you can actually innovate with a, a very large monolith that was moved uh, to AWS. Now, some may say, well, why not go to microservices directly? Well, the first reason is because microservices are not suitable for all workloads. The other reason is because when you start dealing with microservices, it adds up a lot of complexity. There are a lot of moving parts, a lot of integration work that's required, a lot of da various data stores that need to be managed. But the primary reason why you probably don't want to go to microservices first is because it requires a lot of manual reengineering. Doing program extraction is difficult. Doing data extraction is difficult. And so that's not something you want to do upfront because it's expensive and it's risky. 
So if you want to smooth the process, get a lot of the agility benefits earlier on in your journey, then it's easier to go to microservices first, and then when suitable, then move on to microservices. So overall, this approach provides agility in the short term with microservices and facilitates the transition to microservices when suitable. And you can see that the AWS mainframe organization service can help all along the way, from the initial migration to managing the microservices to actually identifying where and when to create microservices. So I did mention to you that you already get a lot of benefits with the microservices. So I'm going to show you what the short-term architecture is, and then I'm going to describe to you where the agility benefits are. But let's start with the short-term architecture. So once you've done your initial migration and modernization, this is the first result you get. So you see the AWS mainframe modernization service with the analyzer component, the IDE, the compiler, all of those resources are available on demand. You have your test environment, and then you have your production environment that hosts the microservices. And all this is on demand elastic. You can also see that you already have your DevOps pipeline that is in place. The AWS mainframe monetization service provides a template so that you can create your own DevOps pipeline. From that pipeline, you can deploy either in your test runtime environment or in your production runtime environment. You can also see that you have the managed data store that are available so that you have broad data access. And as soon as you have that topology, you can see that you can start innovating and you can bring innovations that are coming from the API gateway if you want to use uh, services and make them available, for example, to mobile application. Um, you can create new microservices, possibly onto serverless Lambda. Uh, from the data, you can start doing data analytics, possibly some machine learning. You have a wide portfolio of offerings that are available from uh, partners on the marketplace. So there's a wide spectrum of things you can do. And at the bottom, you see you have all the system management capabilities that facilitates security, auditing, monitoring, logging, provides you infrastructure as code capabilities, and pay as you go. So the best part of this architecture is that it provides many of the agility attributes that are required by mainframe workloads. And it does not only do that on a small portion of your mainframe workload, but it applies those agility benefits on the entire workload that you did move over using that, that approach. So let's review some of those agility benefits. Let's start from the left-hand side. You see knowledge-based development, and that refers to the analyzer tool. Oftentimes, when you modernize legacy applications, it can be complex to understand all the dependencies, the impact of your code changes, etc. So by virtue of having an analyzer tool, then you can quickly realize the impact of your changes. You can quickly make decisions on where to make those changes and make some decisions on how to modernize. So you're going to accelerate the decision-making process and get more confident into making your changes. By virtue of using um, the modern IDE, an integrated development environment, then you get into features such as smart editing, um, instant compilation, you can do local debugging, unit testing. So again, this is going to accelerate the, um, the way you can develop your application once they've been migrated onto the AWS mainframe modernization service. You have the agile development because then once with the service, you have the DevOps pipeline that get created. You have on-demand disposable resources, which means that at any time, if you need more, you can create more. So that brings some agility to your teams as well. You get the agility. You get the elasticity which means that you can expand or shrink the infrastructure that's available. And that applies not only to uh, production environment, but that also applies to dev and test environment. If suddenly you have a, a new project that's starting and you need to expand your resources, then you can do so quickly and easily. With the managed service as well, you get choice of compute, data store, and language. And that's important because it could be that one day you want to use a specific workload profile, and then suddenly you notice that, oh, this is not the best instance for it. Well, with the managed service, it's very easy to switch. You just have a few clicks. You can change the instance type, restart the instance, and off you go. You have a different workload profile, and you can handle the load. So it brings having the choice of compute, data store, and languages brings a lot of flexibility in terms of how you manage your infrastructure. I mentioned to you that when we do the initial migration and monetization, you can quickly API enable. And even when you're doing automated refactoring, actually, out of the box, you get some REST services that you can leverage. And which means that this, the uh, microservices are service enabled, and then they can be quickly accessed from other innovations that may be running somewhere else in your, infra in your infrastructure. 
By virtue of being on AWS, you know you have a lot of capabilities that are available. So having your workload onto AWS brings an innovation platform, brings a lot of capabilities to actually innovate quicker with the AWS mainframe organization service. You see also that you have broad data store access. That's very useful also for, for innovation because you have, you're not locked in, for example, with vSAM data that's hard to access, but on the contrary, because you've been modernizing your data store, then you can quickly access the data for other purposes. Consumption-based pricing, that also helps, because if you have a low cost of entry, then that helps for experimenting and innovation. We also provide um, infrastructure as code. So for example, the uh, AWS mainframe organization service will be available flag via cloud formation so that you can start introducing the creation of resources of that service through cloud formation and create infrastructure as code to increase the velocity of managing those, those environments. You have centralized operations, and I already talked about managed services and how that provides agility. So you can see that it provides plenty of agility gains for the mainframe workloads. And all this agility is available with a short-term migration. So now I want to talk about how you can get started with the AWS mainframe modernization service. So we're happy to say that uh, it's now available in preview, which means that if you get to the AWS console right now, you'll be able to see an entry for AWS mainframe modernization service, and you can start using it. We've actually created some tutorials so that uh, if you want to start a, a development environment or if you want to start the analyzer environment, then you can do so. You can also start creating runtime environments, creating applications, deploying applications. So it's available for you to, to experiment. The other aspect I want to mention is that although it's available in preview right now, we don't recommend it for production until it becomes GA. This being said, both the Blue Edge solution and the MicroFocus toolchain are now available from AWS. So if you need to start your project right now, we can have the full tools available to you. And then over time, when the managed service will be available for GA and you want to move to, uh, if you want to move your production environment to the managed runtime, you'll be able to do an easy transition to the managed runtime. So all this to say that the service is available in preview, but the full solutions are available from AWS. So if you need to start or host your project and put it in production before it becomes GA, we can help you with that, and we have the full solution available to you. Uh, quick, uh, quick comment around pricing. So I mentioned that uh, we're providing a pay-as-you-go model uh, for, with the AWS mainframeization service, which means that based on the instant type and the size that you choose, then you'll have differing prices. So it's very similar to what you see with other AWS services. We also provide discounts based on the commitments. So uh, if you're committing to a one-year or three-year time frame, then you'll have some discounts available. You'll also notice that there are multiple tools that are available at no addition, multiple tools that are available at no additional charge. For example, the uh, analyzer tool and the build tools are available at no additional charge. Um, something I want to remind you is that AWS provides for both the infrastructure and the licenses. I want to reiterate it. I know I slightly mentioned it in the past, but um, for example, with MicroFocus, you go straight to AWS. We're a one-stop shop, and we're going to provide the software and the licenses that go along with it. You don't need to, a separate procurement process for that. So it's all available on demand via the AWS mainframe organization service. So we have a very structured approach. So if you're embarking on a new mainframe organization project, or if you're thinking about it, we have a very structured approach that's based on the migration acceleration program. And that program comes from the distributed side. Uh, it's a comprehensive and proven cloud migration program that's based on the experience and the best practices coming from thousands of migration projects. And what we've done is that we've tailored that program specifically for mainframe migration and modernization. So we have what is called available map for mainframe, migration acceleration program for mainframe. And map for mainframe highlights the specificities of the mainframe. There are specific points where we need to be very careful when we proceed. There are best practices that are implemented within the program so that we make sure we can minimize the risk and increase the likelihood of success with those projects. That map or mainframe acceleration program, um, migration acceleration program relies on six pillars that you can see here. First, it's a strong methodology. 
Second, it relies on tools that are provided from AWS and partners. And of course, the tool that we're highlighting here that's available is the AWS Mainframe Organization Service. It relies on partners that do have the expertise to use the tools or conduct the projects, or AWS professional services. It relies on training and also on AWS investments that are available to help you with those uh, investments for being successful with migration and monetization. If we look a little deeper into the methodology itself, I did mention to you that there are critical pieces that you need to be careful of when engaging in those projects. So we have a very structured approach that starts with the uh, assess phase, the mobilize, then goes on to mobilize and then migrate and modernize. So the assess phase tries to go as fast as possible and is really a scoping exercise for the mobilize phase. During the assess phase, we're gonna do like high level discovery, we're gonna do like a business case estimate, see if we have alignment, we're gonna start doing some pattern and tool guidance and give you like a high level understanding about how we typically approach mainframe migration and monetization. And very quickly, we're gonna go run into the mobilize phase. And one key aspect of the mobilize phase is that we wanna make sure that the tool chain that we're embarking into, that we're thinking about, is being experimented and testing in the context of your specific situation. And that means we're gonna put a strong emphasis on doing a POC, a proof of concept, or a pilot. And from that POC or pilot, we'll be able to gather a lot of learnings. First, whether we can actually do the migration and monetization using the tool chain, like if, you, if we actually support all the technology stack that's present on the mainframe, and whether the tool chain is sufficient, or whether we need to think about other options. And it's gonna also give uh, great learnings about how fast we can move when we do the migration at scale. We're, during the mobilize phase, we're also do, gonna do the business case. We're gonna work on the uh, design of the target architecture. We're gonna work on presenting a migration plan, etc. And then once we're done with this, then we move to the migrate and monetize phase, which is the actual uh, migration at scale. And you can see that from the beginning, which is the assess phase, to the mobilize, to the migrate and modernize, then we can use the tool chain that I present to you, presented to you within the AWS mainframe monetization service. So we highly recommend to engage specialists that are trained and experimented with the tool chains. Unless you have prior experience using those tools, you should either contact uh, a, a competent partner or AWS mainframe specialist. So we're very happy that in recent years, we've been able to grow the pool of mainframe specialists we have within AWS. Well, we have mainframe specialists now in many roles, so that if, depending on which stage you are in your migration journey, whether it's very early um, uh, approach definition, whether you're actually getting into the delivery of specific engagements, we have lots of roles and, and individuals that are here to help. We can also cover many sectors. Uh, we have mainframe specialists for commercial sector, public sector, financial services. We have mainframe specialists that are focused on helping our partners. So if you're a partner of ours and you need help with mainframe monetization, we also have mainframe specialists that are here to help. We're also very fortunate to have grown the pool of uh, specialists so that we have coverage globally. So you'll find specialists in North America, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and the Asia Pack. Now, not only you can leverage uh, AWS mainframe specialists, but we're also very fortunate to have great partners that can assist our customers. Um, most of those partners are currently part of the AWS mainframe migration competency program, or they are smaller partners that do have the expertise and the experience with those, uh, those tool chains. Interestingly, because it's not easy to use those tools, and because we recommend that experts and specialists use those tools, we expect that the primary users of our service are gonna be those partners. All those patterns that you're seeing here actually have collaborated with us for the launch of the AWS mainframeization service. We've done some enablement, they provided us some feedback, so we have great collaboration ongoing, and we're actually also working with them to develop some offerings so that we can be even more efficient when they bring together on those projects. A few of them actually have already published their offerings. For example, DXC, uh, Estadia and Advance have published their offerings, so if you're interested in already in understanding better how they can assist you, uh, we have published an APN blog post on this. You can find the links there, or you can Google it and be able to find their offerings as well. So again, important message here is that unless you have prior experience with the tool chain, either reach out to the AWS specialists or to those partners so that we can best assist you. Um, I provide here some links for you to learn more. 
So the first one is a link to the website for the new service. Second link uh, is a link to the console itself. If you want to go and start experimenting, uh, again, you can go through the tutorials. You can start getting a feel for uh, what it's like. A link to the service documentation. I also provided a link here into the approach on to getting to agile services. Everything I talked about, how you can get to macro and micro services, and you have a link that describes more into details how to engage in such an approach. And then the, finally, at the bottom, you see two links. Uh, one link to the uh, Blue Edge toolchain and some of their capabilities, and then another link to the MicroFocus uh, toolchain and how it fits as well into the creation of agile services. All right, so um, to finish this presentation, I do have a small uh, explainer video I want to walk through. That's a nice summary of what we're bringing and the value we're bringing with the new AWS Memorization Service. But before I run the video, I want to send a special thanks to the uh, AWS service team that's been very working hard on creating that new service. Um, I also want to bring a special thanks to the other AWS individuals that did provide uh, their help and their contribution to the service. And a special thanks to the Blue Edge team, the MicroFocus team, that did great work uh, for the launch of this new service. So I'm going to run the, the video and then I'll have a final word. Technology has changed a lot since your mainframe-based business was built. But modernizing and migrating a mainframe can be very challenging. Environments are typically cluttered with decades of technical debt. Migration approaches can be difficult to select and deliver. And finding trusted, qualified experts isn't easy. Meet AWS Mainframe Modernization, a unique platform for migrating and modernizing on-premises mainframe workloads to a managed runtime environment on AWS. AWS Mainframe Modernization provides the capabilities required for the analysis, transformation, development, and operation of mainframe workloads. It supports popular migration patterns like replatforming and automated refactoring. You can choose the pattern that best fits your needs with help from qualified experts along the way. AWS Mainframe Modernization brings agility to mainframe workloads, both at the application level and infrastructure level. The managed runtime environment facilitates security, resiliency, and cost efficiency. And it includes leading and proven tool chains for successful migrations. Pay as you go and an elastic infrastructure reduces costs across the board. With AWS Mainframe Modernization, businesses can innovate with speed and agility. Start your journey confidently with AWS Mainframe Modernization. All right, so as you can see, it's now a great time to modernize mainframe workloads. The new AWS Mainframe Modernization service provides many benefits, tremendous agility gains, substantial cost savings, and a robust platform to modernize and run your applications. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any mainframe initiatives that you're embarking into. We'll be glad to help. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.